evening and welcome to Sunday night service for September the 26th here at Holka First Baptist Church. We are in the season for the Margaret Lackey offering. Um, we are over halfway there. We have a map that we are coloring in here in our sanctuary with $22 per county. 57 counties have been covered, only 25 to go. So I guess we'd say we're two thirds of the way to our goal. Our Young at Heart has a day trip planned for Friday, October the 8th to Iuka, to the Apron Museum and the Cream and Sugar Cafe. The church bus is leaving at 9 o'clock, 9.30, excuse me, from the Family Life Center parking lot. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board, and if you are watching this on Facebook Live or on the recast, you can call the church and sign up if you want to do so. Remember that our food pantry has needs. These are going to be mostly dry goods, like the pastas and the macaronis, and the canned goods, like canned vegetables and canned fruits. Be sure that if you want to help restock the food pantry, you do remember our food pantry when you do your grocery shopping, or if you'd rather, you can donate cash to the church office for the food pantry. Our weekly needs every week, we have an offering plate down front. We have offering plates in our foyer, and if you are not joining us in person, you can mail your offerings to P.O. Box 205 or come by the church and leave the offering there. Let's bow for a word of prayer, and then we're going to watch our Margaret Lackey video for tonight. Lord, help us to focus our minds on you. Lord, not on the things around us, not on the things of the world, not on the things that distract us or pull us away, but only on you. And Lord, just give us hearts to listen and then feet and hands to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our Margaret Lackey video tonight is about our port ministry that the Margaret Lackey offering supports. And I am sorry the audio is not the best, but I think you'll be able to understand most of what these people have to say about the port ministry. Thank you very much for uh, helping us to bring something here in the ship when we are needed in time of uh, pandemic situation. You are there to help us. Thank you. God bless and maraming salamat. Thank you very much Hi, guys. for helping us during the pandemic situation. office but during the pandemic it, apparently they were going out to the ships and making deliveries which allowed these people to get the things that they needed and so that is one of the ways that your Margaret Lackey offering helps. Our call to worship tonight as I stand amazed in the presence and let's stand up as we sing this one on the first and second verses. I stand amazed in the presence
may be seated as we continue with the first verse of Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Hopeless game, 
forgot to uh, mention this morning, or I forgot to mention this morning, I guess, is that the freezer did finally come in. It was delivered Tuesday and it's here and ready to be stocked to help out with food pantry purposes. So uh, I do wanna let you know that. Also, if you have any spare change or dollars, you can give those tonight for those here in attendance to go toward our mission offering. And uh, so I wanna remind you about that. And we trust that all those watching at home stood on the first hymn as they were instructed to. And uh, we are glad that you are tuning in through Facebook Live or here in person tonight as we are going to continue to look at how the giver equips us for a purpose. He has a purpose uh, to give us these gifts. And so in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8 is where we see more of the gifts that are uh, given here that are described, of course, in Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians. In all of these places, none of these lists are complete. Uh, and that is for a reason because some of uh, these may be different according to your unique enablement by the Holy Spirit. But these were the gifts that were seen or should have been seen in the church there that Paul was addressing in Romans chapter 12. Now, the gifts are mentioned in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. So I'll read those verses starting out and we're going to go back and look at some of the verses previous to that as well. Let's start out reading in Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 6. The Bible says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that te teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight. We do thank you once again for your presence here in our midst. Lord, we're thankful for these uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit that are mentioned in Scripture that we can study and we can see significance and why uh, these were placed here and why Paul talked about these things. And dear Lord, we're thankful that we all have been equipped and that you equipped us with a purpose and Lord, help us to unwrap those gifts and continue to use those gifts to honor you, to glorify you, and to serve you with all of our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And Lord, we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's kind of what we began talking about last Sunday night and continuing tonight is to continue to understand that Every one of us as a believer in the moment that we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ receives the exact gift and resources that we need to fulfill the role that he has given us in the body of Christ. We're all a part of the body of Christ. We all have a purpose and a plan in the body of Christ and he equips us for that assignment. And that's kind of what Paul begins to deal with as you back up to verse 3 where he says, therefore I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He goes on in verse 4 and 5 and says, whereas we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. And so certainly we see there that these gifts that we have were given to us by the grace of God. And so we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. But we're also not to go, in, go around thinking about ourselves less than we should be thinking about ourselves. There is a balance there that comes with serving Christ, with understanding what our gift is. And also as we are continuing to be transformed and going through that process of sanctification, we are certainly to be exhibiting that fruit of the Spirit that we've talked about previously in Galatians chapter 5. And so it is important for us to remember and to understand that we've each been given the exact gift that we need to serve in the church, to serve in the community, to be active in sharing our faith, to be active in promoting the gospel, to be active in preaching the message and getting the message out to the people 
of what Jesus has done in our life, what he will do in their life, and how he wants to use them as well. It has been said that we are to faithfully use our unique enablement that God has given us. I like the way that John MacArthur described, uh, MacArthur described it. He said, gifts are like a palette of basic colors from which God selects a blend that is unique and a unique hue for each disciple's life. That's what we see. And that's what we should be seeing in our church and in other churches as well is that believers have been gifted. They, there is that palette of basic colors and God selects that and blends a unique hue for each disciple's life. He has a purpose for your life. He equips you with what you need to be the disciple that he has placed you here to be. And here's something else that we need to understand. Not only has he equipped you with what you need to be unique in your uh, area where you're serving in your church, but he is also expecting you and requiring you and wanting you to serve in your local church. He wants you to be a part of the body of Christ. He wants you to be a part of the uh, ministries that are taking place in that area. Because he said, for as we have many members in verse 4 in one body, and all members have not the same office. So some are a part of the arm, some are a part of the hands, some are a part of the legs, some are a part of the feet. But we all have a purpose. We all have an area where we have been gifted, and we need to be using that gift to make sure that the body is functioning properly, that the body is growing, that the body is continuing to move forward and making an impact and making a difference. It's a challenge for us, right? It is, a, it is a command for us to be active and to be involved. As a Christian, you are to be a functioning, serving member of a local church. That's what Paul would talk about. That's what other writers and authors talk about as well. If you are not a functioning, serving member of a local church, you are living outside of the will of God. That's plain and simple. It's what the Bible is talking about. It is what Paul is saying here. We are to be active. We have many members in one body. All members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members of one another. And if you are not using the gift, the unique gift that you have been given to serve others, then it hinders. It means there's a lack there. It means there's a need there that shouldn't be. Because you have a purpose in the church. And it's not just to show up three times a year. It's not just to show up on special occasions or certain times, but it is to be active and be involved in the ministries of that church that you are a part of. That's what we see playing out here in these verses. And so that's why he said there are different gifts according to the grace that has been given. The bottom line is we need to remember and we need to understand that it is important for us to be functioning, serving members of a local church. And Tony Evans puts it this way. Because you're a part of the body, you matter. But because you're only one part, it's not all about you. And so we, we matter. We've been created for a reason. We've been created for a purpose. We're a part of the body. There's a... A, a reason for us being here. We've been equipped for a purpose and it is to serve others. It is to serve one another. It is to bring people to Jesus Christ. And Paul also points out here that these gifts are given by grace. That's what he says in the first part of verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. These are all grace-based gifts. There is nothing works-related about this. You can't do anything to earn these gifts. They were given freely. The picture is of this. An illustration that was used by Tony Evans, I believe. He said there was a young man 
who decided that he was going to start charging his mother for doing chores. And so he left her a note and he said, I emptied the dishwasher for that, you owe me a dollar. I cleaned my room for that, you owe me a dollar. I mowed the lawn for that, you owed me a dollar. His mother responded by leaving a note. I was in labor with you for 16 hours. I clean your room. I make sure that you have food and clothing. I do all that for free. Charge you nothing. She did it out of love. And we have to understand that is grace based. Jesus loved us enough that he was willing to die on the cross for our sins. He was willing to give us these gifts. And the Holy Spirit reveals to us what these gifts are and we can unwrap these gifts, this unique hue, and we can thrive. We can grow spiritually so that we are being the disciples that we have been placed here to be. And Paul lists seven gifts in these verses and we know there's at least 19 gifts, if not more, mentioned in Scripture in various different places. But what Paul is saying here is these gifts were given to the church that he's writing to in Rome for them to use in ministry and service. And what you'll notice tonight is most every one of these gifts is either a teaching or leadership gift or it is a service gift. It's helping one another grow. It's helping each other function. It's helping each other mature. It is helping us to progress in our walk with Christ. He said, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, this is one of the gifts that's also mentioned in 1 Corinthians that we talked about a little bit last Sunday night. The idea here is not foretelling, but it's more forthtelling. The pastor, the preacher, or evangelist is using this gift, and it is a teaching gift, and they are careful to preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. It's what Paul warned Timothy about. It's what Paul warned the churches about. Many that he wrote to was to make sure that they weren't deceived by false teaching and incorrect doctrine. And so these men are able to preach the message and they take the whole counsel of the Word of God and they carefully preach it so that people are challenged by the Word, they are helped by the Word, they are transformed by the Word, their minds are renewed by the Word so that they can make an impact, so they can make a difference if they are already saved and a disciple. And if not, that the Holy Spirit could prick their heart, show them their lost condition, and they would surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. It's what Paul talked about when he said uh, that he was glad he didn't baptize anybody in his name. He baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. He said, so while you're over here fussing and arguing about whether you're a follower of Apollos or Peter or Paul, you can leave my name out of it because I didn't baptize anybody in my name. You're a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to see is that the preaching, whether it comes from an evangelist, a preacher, a pastor, is to point people to Jesus Christ. To tell them of their need for salvation and how Jesus is the only one that can save. It's not about working your way in. It's not about serving your way in. It is about surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. He goes on. And it says, not only whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, but then in verse 7 he said, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. The ministry is a service gift. This is a person who can meet spiritual needs in a practical way. You see it with ushers on a Sunday morning who would be able to help somebody find a place to sit. If they are find uh, the restroom or find something that they're needing to find whenever they come into the sanctuary if they're a visitor. It could be those who work in the nursery or volunteer uh, to help out maintaining the church grounds or those that help out in the sound system. I mean, me and Melinda would not be able to broadcast as well if Mike doesn't have everything working right. 
And so he has his place of ministry. He has his place of service. There's teaching that is mentioned next. He said, he that teacheth on teaching. This is, once again, a service gift, a leadership gift, a teaching gift mentioned here. It is the desire to clarify truth. It is someone who has spent time studying the Word of God. They are prepared to teach the Word of God. They have a questioning mind, and so they're the ones that would be good teaching a Sunday school class or helping out with vacation Bible school or doing a backyard Bible study or helping out with ministry in some area such as that. He goes on in verse 8 and he said, Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. This person has the gift to encourage people to practice what they have been taught. And so this person would work right along with the person who has the gift of teaching. It is another of the leadership or teaching gifts. And so the person who can teach and the person with the gift of exhortation work together to not only make sure that people are, are being fed the Word of God, that they are learning the Word of God, that they are growing and maturing in their faith, but then they are being shown how to put that faith in practice. How they can discover their gift. How they can discover uh, their area of service. And they get them plugged into that area. And they make sure that they are functioning properly. They make sure that they are a part of the ministries of the church. Whatever area they need to be plugged into. And that they are disciples who are then able to disciple others. They stimulate people in their faith. They encourage people to love Jesus more. And certainly we can be thankful for those people that are a part of our church that stimulate our faith, that encourage us, that help us to love Jesus more. And we see in how they conduct themselves and how they carry themselves that they love Jesus with all their heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And so those with the gift of teaching and exhortation are necessary for a healthy Christian life. And we can be thankful that we have people that are uniquely gifted that way in our church. He goes on and says in verse 8, He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. They have a service gift, the gift of giving. They have the ability to make good decisions with their uh, financial means and they meet immediate needs. They make sure that the work of God is carried on. And most of the time it is behind the scenes. Nobody else may ever know that they were the one who gave, but they were willing to give. Not because they wanted the honor, not because they wanted the credit, but they simply wanted the ministry to continue to grow. They wanted the church to continue to move and function properly. And so they donated whatever needed to be donated to make sure the ministry need was met, make sure that whatever it is that is needed is provided and taken care of. He moves on there and he says, he that ruleth with diligence. This is a teaching gift, has the idea of leadership. This person has a vision. They have a vision for the children's ministry or they have a vision for the youth ministry or they have a vision for this class or that class and how it can move forward, how it can make a bigger impact, how it can go and, and, and do even more than it's already doing. And so they get everybody on board. They share their plan. They share their goal. They know how they want to accomplish it. They help others to see how they can be a part of that. And they coordinate the activities, and it's all done with the common goal of glorifying God. Making sure he gets the credit, that he gets the glory, that whenever that ministry begins to grow, when that ministry begins to uh, function and do what they had in mind that it would do, they're not looking for the credit, they're not looking for the glory, but they give it all to God. He goes on and says, He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. This is a service gift. This person has the ability to identify with people and comfort people who are in distress. 
They know how to go to someone and offer a comforting word. They know how to send a card. They know when to send a text message. They know when to call somebody. They know when to just listen, to let somebody have a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen to. Whatever it is that they need, they step in. They identify with the situation. They comfort those people. They help lift those people up. They help build those people back up. They are there in seasons of distress and grief. And so Paul is here saying that all of these ministries are beneficial. All these gifts are beneficial. And there shouldn't be anybody fighting over one gift in particular. If you're not gifted in that area, don't be desiring that gift. Don't be fighting somebody else about that. Don't be jealous of somebody else about that. Find the unique gift that you have been given and serve God in that area. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you where he wants you to get plugged in at and how he wants to use you so that you are making a difference, so that you are making an impact. I like the, an illustration that Bill Gothard shared concerning these gifts mentioned here in Romans chapter 12. He said, imagine that you were at a dinner party and you've gotten to the course where they are about to serve dessert. And the server comes out with a tray of desserts and he trips over something and falls and the desserts go everywhere. And he's flat on his face. There are different ways people react according to how they're gifted. The person with gift of prophecy would say, that's what happens when you're not careful. Now I was reading this illustration and I began to laugh immediately when I read that one because that's what I do. It? As soon as the girls do something at home, I'm like, I told you that was going to happen if you weren't careful. I told you. And see, that's what the person with the gift of prophecy does. That's, that's what happens. You should have been watching where you were going. Well, then the next person comes up. They have the gift of mercy. And they go over to the person and they say, don't feel bad. Anybody can do that. It can happen to anybody. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel bad. It, it, it could happen to anybody. The person with the gift of service is then going to immediately step up and say, hey, look, we'll, we'll get this cleaned up. I'll help you clean it up. And they help the person up. They begin the process of getting it cleaned up. The person with the gift of teaching would say, here's what happened and here's how you can correct it so the next time it doesn't happen you had too many desserts on one side the tray was too heavy on one side and that's why it happened really didn't have anything to do with your trip and it was just you didn't have the tray loaded right and so they're trying to teach them how to load the tray right next time then there's the person with the gift of exhortation that says Here's the best way to make sure this never happens again. Next time, just serve the desserts first. They'll already be at the table waiting for whenever we're ready for them. Or if you're like my niece, she wants the dessert first anyway. So it's already there to eat. There's the gift of giving. That person says, you know what? Now, regardless of what anybody else says, I'm just going to make a donation and we'll just buy a new dessert and everybody will have dessert before we leave here tonight, okay? That's what they do. Then there's the person with the gift of administration who goes and even goes further than the person with the gift of service and that just says, let me help you clean it up. He begins to delegate. Jim, you go get the mop. Sue, I need you to help pick up the, the plates and the tray. And uh, Mary, I'm going to get, let you take the money and go buy a new dessert. And so they kind of delegate and get everything going and get everything back in order. That is how all of these gifts can work together and function together and everything can go and move properly. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to use these gifts and we will use whatever gift, what unique gift we have been given... To serve God, we can see how we can work together with our unique gifts and our unique personalities to make a difference, to make an impact in the life of those in our church, to make an impact for future generations, and to make an impact on the community around us. Adrian Rogers said, you are a gifted child. God doesn't want you to go to church just to sit and soak. 
Your life is going to be meaningless to a degree until you discover your spiritual gift and put it to work. And so the gifts that we looked at last Sunday night, the gifts that we looked at tonight, all of these are not even all the gifts that we probably have. They're just a starting point for us to look at and examine things that Paul was addressing in each one of these churches, in each one of these areas. But there's no doubt about it. We as Christians need to not only discover our spiritual gift, but we need to put those in to practice. We need to put them to work. We need to use them practically to make a difference and to make an impact in the lives of those around us. And as we serve others, we will be, we will be being served as well, and everybody will be growing. Everybody will be progressing. Everybody will be moving forward, and we will continue to grow and function the way we were created to function because the giver has equipped us with a purpose. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now as we prepare for our hymn of invitation. Lord, we pray that you have spoken.